Determinants have lots of applications, and so I want to make sure we talk about at least some of them. In this video, I want to talk about one particular application of determinants, which is that you can use them to find the area of transformed figures. And that's based on the fact that if you have some matrix A, so let's say the matrix A is a 2 by 2, it'll be 1, 2, and then 3 and 0. So just a simple matrix. If we think about each of the columns of A as a column vector, so we have the vector 1, 3, and the vector 2, 0, let's go ahead and sketch those really quickly in an xy coordinate plane. So maybe something like this with x and y, and let's say we have 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, something like that. So if we sketch these vectors, let's sketch the first column vector in blue. So the vector 1, 3 in standard position would be this vector here, and the vector 2, 0 would simply be the vector out along the horizontal axis to here. So we have 2, 0, and we have 1, 3. The connection that we want to make here is that these two vectors, if we treat them as two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, in other words, if we sketch in now a vector that is parallel to this 1, 3 vector, so maybe it looks something like that, roughly, and then we sketch in a vector that's parallel to 2, 0, so maybe that looks something like this, the area of this parallelogram is given by the determinant of this matrix. In other words, given this matrix, we take the column vectors of the matrix, we use them as adjacent sides of this figure, and whatever parallelogram they form, so when we sketch in the other two sides, whatever parallelogram that forms, the area of that is given by the determinant of A. So if we call this parallelogram, let's call it P, then we can say that the area of the parallelogram P is equal to the absolute value of the determinant of A. And the reason that we use determinant of A written out like this instead of the determinant of A where we write it like that is because if we write determinant of A this way, then we have the double lines on either side and it's confusing to think about these two lines meaning the determinant and these two lines meaning absolute value. So we like to keep this as determinant of A written out. So this is the absolute value of the determinant. So like in this example, if we just took the determinant of this matrix, we would say 1 times 0 is 0 minus 2 times 3 is 6. So we would get a negative 6. And if we keep our absolute value, because we said the absolute value of the determinant, so the absolute value, the absolute value of negative 6, of course, is positive 6. So the area of this parallelogram is 6. The cool thing is that what we just did with the determinant can translate into other figures as well. So let's say, for example, we'll go ahead and sketch in a two-dimensional coordinate system. So something like this, again with x and y. If we have, let's say, some pre-image, and maybe it's a square up here, something like this. And let's say we call that figure, we'll call it f. And we apply a transformation to that figure. And when we apply the transformation, maybe the figure turns into a parallelogram over here. So maybe let's say it looks something like this. We'll try to sketch it in roughly. But after the transformation, that square turns into this parallelogram. And so we're undergoing here to get from the square to the parallelogram, we're undergoing some transformation. And we'll call that transformation T we'll call the transformed figure the figure G. So we start with F, it undergoes the transformation T, and it turns into G after that transformation. We can use this determinant concept if we want to find the area of G. But all we need, and this is the helpful part, all we need is the area of F and the transformation matrix that represents the transformation. If we know the area of the original figure, and we know what the transformation is doing, we don't need to know anything else about G. We don't need to know exactly where G ends up. We don't need to know the dimensions of G. We don't even need to know exactly what shape it is. Maybe it changed into a rectangle. Maybe it changed into a parallelogram. Maybe it stayed a square. It doesn't matter. 
as long as we have the area of F and the transformation T, then we can use those two things to find the area of G. And so that's helpful because a lot of times it'll be easy to find the area of the original figure you're starting with and you know what you're doing with the transformation. You don't have to go through the extra work to figure out more information about G. You can just use those two pieces of information to find G's area. So to give you an example, let's go ahead and say that we are starting with a square up here in the first quadrant. And so I'm making this up, but let's go ahead and say that the vertex here at this corner is two, two, and that this is maybe we'll say four, two, this would be then four, we'll call it four, four, and this would then be two, four. Okay. So those are the corners of the square F. And let's say that the transformation T we can express as a matrix vector product. And let's say the matrix that expresses it is maybe negative one, two, zero, and one. And so that's going to be transforming every vector. And so now we literally have everything that we need. We just have to find the area of F, which we can do using its corners. And we need the determinant of the matrix that expresses the transformation T as its matrix vector product. So to find the area of F, we'll say the area of F, we can see that it's two units wide. It starts at X equals two and ends at X equals four. So it's two units wide. And of course it's a square, so we know it's two units tall, but we can look and see that. The square starts at Y equals two and ends at Y equals four, so it's two units tall. So the area is two times two or four. And then we also need the determinant of the transformation matrix. So we'll say the determinant of negative one, two, zero, one, that's gonna be equal to negative one times one is a negative one, minus two times zero is zero. So the determinant is negative one. And now we can say that the area of G, so the area of G, and this parallelogram is from our old illustration, we haven't actually said what F turns out to be after it undergoes this transformation T. So it's not necessarily going to be this parallelogram. The point is we start with F, it undergoes the transformation T into some unknown figure G. But we know that the area of G is going to be equal to the absolute value of the area of F. So the area of F multiplied by the determinant, we'll say of T. We'll just say that this matrix here is T because it represents the transformation T. So by the determinant of T. And so when we find that product, the area of F we already know is four and the determinant we already know is negative one. So we get four times negative one. Well, that's the absolute value of negative four. And we know that that's equal to positive four. So the area of G, the transformed figure, we know is four even though we haven't found out any other information about G, we were able to find it just using the area of the original figure and the determinant of the transformation matrix.